Examining collaboration and equality in instrument development. John Kelly and Charles Matthews. The aim of this film is to reflect on our journey and learning from the development of the Kelly Caster. In particular, we want to share an emerging set of thoughts around what's best described as an accidental journey into a new understanding of what collaboration means to us. The guitar was created in a time and a context. For me, this is very much about the need for social change and equality very much influenced by Woody Guthrie's notion of a living song as opposed to a dying song. Something that makes you take pride in yourself and your work and gives you the confidence to protest about the things that need protesting about. From what I remember of the early underpinning principles, it needs to be reliable and robust to touring professionally. It needs to look and feel good. I wanted to fall in love with it like anybody falls in love with their instrument. It needed to be practiced, something more than an accessible object that plays without emotion. I met John attending my first Drake Music Hackneys, where he presented a design for a guitar that he'd wanted to realise for many years. We worked together on the first prototype at a hackathon in the summer of 2015. Gowan Hewitt laid the foundations by customising an existing guitar to John's specifications, which we used to develop a digital string detection system together. John played the first song on it the next day. This led to a sustained collaboration through Drake Music's research and development program, now called DM Lab. Gowan took on the management of the project, working tirelessly to bring the many elements together to keep us on track and to make the physical body of the guitar a reality. Drake Music were instrumental in securing funding through a range of sources, including the Paul Hamlin Foundation and the Calouste Gumbunkian Foundation, in collaboration with Walled City and Inclusive Creativity. Since the official launch last year, we've been working together on a less formal basis, developing new features for gigs, troubleshooting, and often desperately trying to put everything back together in time for the last orders. Through all this, we found ourselves increasingly discussing the development of the social context, using the social model and how this has influenced our other work. We've tried to illustrate the informal way we work together using some videos recorded during our recent development sessions, alongside mobile phone footage of gigs and rehearsals. During our conversations, John and I are sitting opposite each other in his living room. In some shots, the Kelly Caster sits between us on the table, a light brown electric guitar with a neck shorter than the traditional instrument and no fretboard. My opening shot was to try and put the Kelly Caster into a little sort of sound bite, which I failed with. But essentially, the, the Kelly Caster has become something more than just a physical, clever guitar that uses groundbreaking music technology to make guitar playing accessible to me and maybe others too as well as the emotion of the art and the emotion of the expression of a song, I feel that one of the things that in collaboration is about the relationship you build, the connection you build with someone, which is an emotion, it's an emotional connection. And so on our journey, um, we also had this other set of starting points, which brings us, I guess, to the point of Cripping the Muse and why we wanted to share that this wasn't just about accessible music technology and collaborativeness, but it was also partly about our journey around understanding words like access, understanding disability as a social or political construct, and also going with an organisation in Drake Music who were on that journey around you know, the grand scheme of things, I, th I, as an individual, feel, goes back to the Woody Guthrie, this machine kills fascism. You know, the guitar wasn't a bullet. What he was saying was his songs are a set of powerful tools with which hopefully to bring about change. Here John is sitting at his computer in his home studio strumming the Calicaster. Oh, I know what else, yeah. That's transposed, isn't it? The screen shows Ableton Live, a commercial piece of audio software, which he's controlling with the custom Calicaster program. Several boxes on screen represent a chord progression and played volume of each string. Having linked a selection of blues chords to notes on a small piano-style keyboard, John moves between them in real time by pressing the keys just before he strums. 
The volume of each string is measured to produce a new set of digital guitar notes according to these chords. In a way, getting the guitar working was the easy bit. But just as John's vision was of something that he'd need to work hard to practice and perfect, we found ourselves making the development process harder for ourselves and avoiding quick fixes, prioritising the integrity and the authenticity of the instrument. In this next clip, we talk about the dialogue in that process. That wasn't something that happened quickly. It was something that emerged over getting to know each other. Um, and was about starting to be able to say the things that were more challenging and difficult to say. To be able to say, actually the way you're doing it isn't the way I want it to happen, or actually that isn't quite doing, you know, and I guess you, you know, I know that I was always making mistakes. I was always saying to you, like, you know, uh, this isn't quite right. And then you go, oh, no, but we've done this like that. And I'm, oh, yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah. You know, so there's something about our humanity in terms of being able to say what's challenging and make mistakes and sort of, in dialogue, be able to say that front of the boundaries yeah. in, in, in some ways, but um, there's comfort, it's a shared understanding of what yeah. the project is, what it isn't, yeah. um, and I think that that kind of comes through the other conversations that we have around it as well, yeah. so it's not just focusing on the guitar all the time, and like anything else, like if you're sitting down in the studio to play with somebody, the first, the first thing you're going to do is often have a cup of tea. Um, just no <laughs> Collaboration happens on many different levels. We had the support of an organisation to give us structure and focus through Drake Music. We had a project manager, Gowan, who was able to navigate us through the journey. We also had John Dickinson, who made the guitar. Friends and colleagues who were musicians who could give us advice. The collaboration for us was often in a state of flux. We weren't too sure where we were going always, but we knew that that kind of unease gave us the freedom to find new creative responses. Coming from it, from a more from a technology oriented angle at first, um, if I just brought this to you and said, oh, well, you wanted it to do this, so here it is, and you're going to have to learn how to play it now. That would not be, that would not be authentic. I don't think. No. Um, but I, I think that's something about how we view accessibility in a a much more fundamental way than it just being like a bolt on or it just being a feature that replicates something that can be done in a different way. If that makes sense, you know, like uh, this button replicates two fingers doing that or this you know I, for me I think something that I've I started to understand it before the guitar but understand it a lot better now is the that the accessibility is part of the dynamic of it it's part of I know I've said the word a lot recently but the aesthetic you know it's all part and part of the, sort of the design which makes it authentic, that gives it its distinct sound, that means that it's an instrument that you can't, I mean, yeah, in one term, the simplicity of it is you can plug it in, you can make a chord, and it sounds great. To play it as an instrument, you need to practice it, you need to learn it, you need, perhaps, you could argue, uh, a level of creativity to say, how am I going to push it further than it just being a chord into a song or into whatever it is that you know you're, you're, you're doing with the guitar so there's something for me about in what you're saying which is about a different kind of notion of accessibility that it isn't it isn't just a simple case of it's a function to enable someone to do something the same in a different way, you know, there's an, a, an assumption maybe that, well, you know, it's just, why didn't you just try and 
adapt to an ordinary guitar. And actually, well, I wouldn't have been able to make the guitar do things I wanted to do or take it further. It would be limited by whatever you, that perception is that you would have put on it if you go back to what you were saying. In my practice, the social model is not just an academic theory written on a bit of paper. It's a living, breathing theory which informs my everyday being. It's a theory in use, not an espoused theory. Accessibility is much more than a bolt-on or a different way to carry out a similar action or function. It brings a unique dynamic and aesthetic that creates its own distinct style, signature, sound. It makes my art mine. As an artist, um, I do identify as a disabled person and I do sing about uh, disability issues and disability equality and our struggle for rights and equality. But that doesn't define the whole of my expression or the whole of my work, if you, if you see what I mean. And I think sometimes, because our emphasis has been trying to articulate what it is about access and disability, that, that people see, well, that's a very niche thing, that we're, we're just talking about disability. And I don't think we are, I think we're talking about a whole movement around opening technology up, free sourcing, breaking things, <laughs> hacking things. There's so many other movements and so many things around equality that we're talking about, which, yes, are about disability, but they're also about so many other aspects of both our lives that we care passionately about. Some key points that we found out about collaboration, a connection, a dialogue, the ability to talk through difficult things until there's a shared understanding, a harmony, an understanding of equality, a sense of value in each other and those around us sharing in the collaborative process. With thanks to Drake Music, and our friends, colleagues and funders.